Hi everyone, my name is Cassie and I will be showing you our new and improved window zipper pockets. We've worked really hard on adjusting some of the little things that are coming up by customers. So let's show you how it's all going. First we're going to start by stitching our placement line for our zipper. While it's doing that, I'm just going to put my zipper on my pole. Alright, so now we've got the zipper pull on. I'm just going to put it all the way to the left side. I'm going to use some washi tape just to anchor down that. That's it, so it's not jingling around while I'm stitching the rest of my product. Just going to center it, and this excess is going to be removed at the end of the stitch down process. Make sure it's very centered. Don't need to go too overboard with the washi tape, but that should be good. And stitch it down. Once that's finished stitching, we're going to remove our washi tape. It's just so it doesn't get stuck in any seams. It's not any use to us anymore. Just tear it out of the seam. The next thing we're going to do is stitch down our top piece of the fabric. I've already prepared all of my, my pieces. So I've got a front piece, which is going to be this piece, and then this will be the back side. So everything is fully lined. First, we're going to stitch down our front piece. This one just needs to go over the placement line by a quarter of an inch. And you can see. Now that you have your front piece of fabric on, we're going to remove our hoop and flip it over and attach our back piece of fabric. So that's uh, lining one, and it's going to be attached using this placement line. Using our washi tape again, you can secure your fabric. Turning the hoop back over. And stitching down. Now we're up to step five and this step is going to be flipping and folding back the front piece and also the lining piece. So first we'll turn our hoop over, remove our washi tape and flip and fold our lining one. To keep the seam open we just finger press along the fold and that should keep it or assist it in staying back. Using our washi tape again Secure that seam. Now we're going to finger press the front fabric A and stitch down. Before moving on to our step six, which is stitching down our placement line for the final or the mesh, we're just going to check that the top is stayed in place. I'm really happy with how that looks, so we'll keep on moving on. We're going to stitch our placement line for our PVC wall mesh. So the reason we've changed the order of this step is so that you can actually leave a little bit extra in the seam. So before it was after all the fabrics of the main section was stitched down, but now we've moved it to before all of that. So you can leave a quarter inch or whatever you're happy with in the actual seam and that will help the mesh stay in and not fall out of the seam after, this, after the satin stitch is completed. 
So when it comes to choosing your PVC, we suggest using a 20 gauge or also referred to as a 0.5 millimeter PVC. And we're finding that that has got the best outcome. It doesn't fall out of the satin stitch and it's pliable enough. The best way to find out whether your PVC is the right one is if you fold it in half, if it creates a milky line, then um, it means that it doesn't have enough flexibility in it. So go for something that doesn't create that milky line, it's pliable, it's much easier to use. So let's get onto it. So I've got my PVC here. I'm going to stitch it down. Okay, so now it's stitched out. We're going to trim the excess, leaving about a quarter of an inch. We find that that is the safe spot. You can trim close if you'd like, but this is just as, just as good to keep in the seam. Does no harm. Especially for the mesh, that is a very good technique to use to keep that extra in the seam. With the holes, depending on how wide they are, it just means that it's got extra st support in the seam to hold on to it. Now we're going to stitch down fabric B. This will be our front piece of flip and fold. So put that one with the excess pointing towards the hoop, the top of the hoop, with it crossing the seam by a quarter of an inch. You can tape this in place if you'd like as well to help it stay in, stay in the right place. Now we can turn our hoop over and repeat the same process with lining two, using that same bottom of the zipper stitch down as our placement line. This fabric has to be upside down or wrong side up. Okay, so now that that is fully secured, we can turn our hoop back over and stitch that down. Now at this time we're just going to check that the back piece of fabric has stayed in place and that one looks good but we're going to keep that as it is right now until we finish tie, uh, stitching down some of the words. So now we're going to only flip over fabric B. We can seam press that as well and stitch it down. Next is the option of stitching down wording if you'd like at the top. So we've got our purple thread which is our option for this stitch down. We're going to keep it that colour. Now that we have stitched our label, we're now going to turn our hoop over and flip and fold our lining two. You can again finger press that seam to keep it down. And you use your washi tape to keep that in place. Place the machine and stitch down your step. Again, check the back of your hoop just to make sure that your piece of fabric has stayed in place. Looks good. And now we are going to repeat the stitch of our little window. So that's under here is our PVC. What we're first going to do, or what I would suggest you do, is change the colour of your thread to match the colour of your fabric. This is because the satin stitch that goes around the window is a little bit wider, not as dense, and you might be able to see the colour underneath. So that's why it's good to just colour match those two things. So I've got my little orange thread here. I'm going to change these over. Okay. 
stitch our step. Now that we have stitched the step down, we need to now remove this window as well as on the back. So first we'll do the front, create a little tear, use your scissors to cut all the way around. That's our front piece. Now we're going to turn it over. Now this is an optional step. I've cut both the front piece of fabric and the back piece of fabric. I'm now going to opt to cut our tearaway out, just that the same um, measurement from our stitching. And this is actually going to change the way of the final look. If you were to leave in your tearaway, you might have a bit of fluffiness outside, on, sorry, on the inside of your satin stitch on the inside of your pocket. Um, this just gives it a bit more of a clean look. So I'm going to now do that. Now we've got a completely see-through little window. Next, we're going to stitch our satin stitch. You can opt to match your top thread to your bobbin thread. We're not going to do that, but you can definitely opt to do that. And the next step is a detailed triple stitch that goes through the center of the satin stitch. I'm going to keep it the same color. Now that one is all done. You've got your satin stitch and your detailing all stitched on there. Looks beautiful. Next we're going to add our backing. Remember to move your zipper pull into the center because this next step is going to go all the way around the hoop so this is your only chance. Put into the center. I like to tape it out of the way. So put a little bit of washi tape over the pull just so it doesn't move too much and then just put another little piece of wash wet washi tape over that seam. Because those pulls are now not together that just might help the whole stitching process. I've got our backing and I'm also going to add a piece of batting. This is optional, that's totally up to you, but I like the way it looks. So that's this one. And that is going to stitch around the entire perimeter. For this step, depending on what type and weight of batting that you've chosen to use, just keep an eye on your foot height. Alright, so now that we've got our batting and our backing on, I'm going to trim the excess batting away from the seam. This is a completely optional step as well, but I think it helps with the bulkiness once you try and turn it out and keep those side seams nice and clean. Beautiful batting that we have here at Sweet Pea, just nice and glidey. Cuts like butter. Okay, now that we've got this, we're now going to attach our lining three. So this is our back lining that you're going to be able to see through your window zipper pocket. This, I'm going to use the same um, fabric color. So this is what we've got here. What I've done in preparation for this is stretched it and ironed it. Um, this is going to stop the bulkiness and the excess like waviness of the fabric once it's all stitched down and turned out. So this has been stretched and ironed. We're going to put that one down and use some washi tape to again keep it in place. So 
So now that's secure, we're going to put it back in the machine. Now that we've returned our hoop into our machine, we're going to stitch our lining down and that's going to leave a three inch gap at the top of our hoop. This is where we're going to turn our product inside out once it's complete. This also gives us a chance to make sure that our piece of fabric has stayed in place. So that one looks good. And we're going to repeat that, that step and it's going to stitch out a triple stitch. Now that we've completed our triple stitch, the machine is going to tell you that there's one more step. This is step 19. This is purely just so that your hoop doesn't finish in the center, because when your project's complete, generally your hoop will realign and finish in the center. This is going to stop it from catching the zipper, just makes it a little bit more safer, otherwise you'll have your, all of your product completely ripped out. So that's a good step to have. We can now remove our product from the hoop. Now that we have removed our product from the hoop, we're going to use our scissors or our rotary cutter to cut a quarter inch from our stitch down line. Remembering to keep the top piece, the opening, um, about an inch excess fabric there. You can then trim your two top points just a little bit to get the excess out and that'll make it more pointy once you turn it out. Making sure not to trim your stitching. So then we have our opening through our lining. We can remove this extra piece of tear away from the seam. So that's what we've got now. And we're going to, I like to scrunch it up just to make it a little bit easier to turn out. I usually grab one corner point and bring that up, making sure not to put too much pressure on these two seams. Okay, so now I've turned out my product. I'm just going to make sure the rest of the points and seams are all pushed out. So I'm going to use my little pointy thing. Being gentle not to actually break through the fabric. That's happened to me a few times on other products and it makes me very sad. So I've got that. Now what you would do is stitch closed the seam. You give it a press to make it a bit more of a crisp seam to sew against. For this video I'm not going to show you how to do that. I'm going to move forward and what I will do next is remove the tear away from the zipper panel part. This is going to open up that seam. You can use your scissors or you can tear it away. All right, so now we just open our zipper a little bit further along. You can remove that little bit of washi tape there and turn it through.
this was our little piece of wash away that kept that zipper down. Let's remove that. And there you go. Give it a bit of a press, remembering not to put too much direct heat onto. You'd have to cover your PVC, but don't put too much steam on it. You might shrink it, but that's your little product. We've got three different window types. But don't they look so cute? I hope you enjoyed.